Hi, Angela here at So Bright Alpine Quilting. Thanks for joining me. If you're watching live, say hello. There's some comments along the way. Or um, if you're watching this afterwards, just uh, type some comments in and I can get back to you as soon as we can. So I'm here today to talk to you about the Boho Heart Quilt Along that we're going to start next week on Monday the 29th of March. So we're going to be making the uh, Boho Heart Quilt by Jen Kingwell. And uh, this version is done by Andrea Bear. So it was a collaboration between the two. And um, ever since I saw Jen's um, Gypsy Wife or Wanderer's Wife, whatever you want to call it, it's been on my bucket list to make. And then when this version came out, I went, right, that's it. It's definitely on the list. And now it's going to have its time in the sun and we're going to make it. And I'm going to share my progress along with you as well. So each week on um, in the Facebook Live, so I've created a group called uh, the Boho Heart Sew Along with Angela and you can join that group it's just a public group and we are going to share our blocks in there and I'll show you give you tips and hints along the way as well so first of all I'm going to show you some of the fabrics that I've chosen I um, I like the reds and the bright colours that uh, has been used in this version, but I really do like purples and blues and the cool colours. So I'm going to be using a um, bundle of the uh, Caf Facet Collective fabrics and probably choosing from um, some of the cool ones that we have in the store at the moment. So this one here is uh, from the August 2021 bundle. And so that's got some nice cool colours. And then we also have the February 20, uh, oh, this one, sorry, August, I think 2022, this one will be. This is a February or might be the February one from this year earlier. So this also has some great cool colours and some black and whites popped in there as well. We've got one left of this older one, uh, which was from 2019. So that's got uh, 20 fat quarters in it as well. So lots of bright colours. And if, you know with Cave that they're all... They're perennial favourites. You know, you never really know how old they are because some of them get re-released in different colourways. Uh, so we also have a couple of bundles of the warm ones as well. So this one is a uh, warm one. This is the newer one. So we also have that one. And then we also have this one, which was the 2020 one as well. So that has some beautiful bright colours in it. And if you like those nice hot colours, that's the way to go. Uh, so I've got a selection down here. I'll pop the camera down in a second and show you those. But I'm also going to put some of these uh, gorgeous dit dots with it. So these are the um, dit dots from Jason Yenta. So they just have a small little spot on them in a grid pattern. And uh, so far I've chosen these four colours that I'm going to use. I'll probably also use some solid fabrics in there as well because you do need some um, somewhere for your eye to rest. Um, if you really want a big selection, then you could go for the 10 inch squares. So we have them in the two colorways. So this one is called dark. So that's got lots of beautiful dark cafe in it. And this is one of the newest ones. This is from the August 2021. And this one is the bright. So that has all your pink warm, warm colors in it. And uh, the other one has the cool colours. So if you want a bigger selection, but smaller pieces of fabric, then go for the 10 inch um, charm packs. They're on the website now and you can also get them in store. Um, also working on another project with those. If you got your newsletter during the week, you would have seen the project that we're working on with that. Um, this quilt also has a lot of low volume fabrics in it. So by low volume, we mean either tone on tone or white or something with a little white and gray or white and with a bit of black in it so i've gone through the store in the quilt um it has 68 i don't quite have 68 low volumes but we have quite a few so we'll be popping some of those in the uh in the kit as well um these are obviously fat quarters and we'll probably do some 20 centimeter strip sets and uh, that will get you lots of different choices for your uh, background strips for those. I'm also going to pop in 
I like using black and white as well. So I've also got to pop in some black and white fabrics. So some of these are from the Morning Frost range from um, Devonstone. So I'm quite liking that. Oh, who have we got here? Hello, Nancy. Hello, Michelle. Nice to see you. Hopefully we'll be in Townsville this year, Michelle. We're booked in. Um, so yeah, so I'll also pop in every now and then up in the blocks uh, some of these gorgeous black and whites or white and blacks and um, these beautiful black and whites and we might even pop in a little pop of the uh, lime green and some of these other tonal black and whites. I also found a couple of interesting stripes. Uh, this one here, which is a rainbow stripe from Devonstone. So that's quite interesting. We might be able to use elements of that in there as well. And this little stripe here was from a range called Folk Friends. And that's got some interesting little uh, tonal values and a little bit of gold bling on there as well. So that one might work well as well. Uh, I also will throw in some of the newer... Uh, contrast fabrics. So these are mainly black and white tone fabrics from the Cat Facet Collective. So I've got these ones. This one here is gorgeous. I love this one. Have a look at this. Lots of fussy cutting opportunities for this one. It's just gorgeous. So I'm looking forward to chopping up those. And the other thing I have, which I might pop in every now and then, is this little heart fabric. So this was called Happy. And um, I think that some of them will work because there's some little heart blocks, applique box in the quilt, or some smaller um, four inch blocks, and I reckon that'll work. So we'll put a, we'll have a panel of that, some of those in there as well. I'll just pop the camera down so that you can see some of the fabrics that I've got laid on the bench there. So just bear with me for just a second. I'll um, just pop the camera down onto the bench there. Okay. Let it steady itself. Right. So these are... Um, some of the fabrics that we have on the bolt and uh, they are in the bundles as well so if you wanted to pick and choose if you weren't really uh, into having a whole bundle then you could certainly pick and choose from some of these so I've got some little warm colors here there's some beautiful and some of them you don't even know what they are until you actually open them up this one's called wisteria it's just gorgeous and some pinks and then we go into the cooler colors so as i said these are spread across quite a few of the bundles and then into some darker colors so we've got these beautiful purples and blues and um, ones with really dark black backgrounds that will help give some contrast to this is the other version of that one i just showed you the contrast so this one is really dark but really good if you've got bigger piece, pieces to cut out so I think this is going to be a really fun quilt and we've pop, popped a couple of dark and muddy ones in there as well just to um, offset some of the brights because sometimes we need that and then I'll give you a close-up look at some of these ones here. These are ones that have the, the contrast in them. So they have the black and white in them. That one I just showed you. This one I love. Funky Stripe. I think that's a branded one, that one. And this little flower one. And these are a couple of um, Andover fabrics that we've just got kicking around. Juicy Juice, I think they are. So maybe the little pop of green because there is a little bit of green in um, some of them. And a closer look at some of these black and whites. So as I showed you, uh, this is a uh, Eclectic Elements from Tim Holtz. So that might be useful in there as well. I like a spot every now and then. And then these darker black and whites are good for um, contrast for framing some of the things because in some of the blocks, 
there are there is quite a dark frame in in them so I think it might be nice to use some black and whites in there and there's some more branded ones this one is a Jen Kingwell one so we have a little piece of Jen in there as well uh, the blocks the fabrics that I'm using on the block that's at the back that you can you saw before you might have seen in the background I'll show you it again in a second uh, so this is uh, one of the beautiful cactus dahlias and this one's called button mosaic so they're really nice and I've paired it with the uh, dip dot in number 27 this one is hi Karen how are you thanks for joining us Okay, so the other things that you'll probably need, you might have some of them, but you might not. So just to let you know that in, um, in the instructions where you've got to cut two and a half inch squares, one and a half inch squares, two inch squares, uh, these are the um, postcard project templates from Jen Kingwell and it's really great that they're, they're some of the sizes that you need for the quilt. Um, so this one is from project number three so that's a two and a half inch square so I've used that uh, today to fussy cut our center for this block and then this one here is a one and a half inch square and that is part of the uh, number seven postcards project the snowball so that'll be a handy one to have. And the other one that will be handy is the two inch finished square. Sorry, uh, one and a half inch finished square, this one. So this is postcard project number one. So they're all handy little templates um, for cutting out. Other things that I use for cutting out, I generally use the normal uh, six by 24 inch ruler. But then I will also make sure that I've got a six by six square for help cutting out the smaller pieces and also the eight by 14 square ruler uh, rectangle ruler which I find handy for cross cutting strips and then for squaring up you'll need a square ruler I'm I don't have one at the moment but I will have one shortly uh, I'll probably use a 12 and a half inch square or a 14 I have a 14 inch square that I use mostly myself but I'll get some um, 12 and a half inch squares in because the largest block is 10 and a half and 12 and a half is always a good square size to have so that's a few squares that we will have other handy little tools oh now the phone's ringing excuse me just one sec good afternoon sir I'm just on Facebook Live at the moment. I'm going to have to call you back. Thanks, bye. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I forgot to turn the phone off. Never mind. Um, so, yeah, little six by one inch rulers are handy things to have. And the um, quarter plus ruler. So that gives you a half inch wide ruler with a line down the center so you, if you're dealing with the templates that don't have a seam allowance you can quite easily add a seam allowance to them of the quarter inch. There is of course in the book um, templates for everything. You'll see in the back of the book you have templates um, for all your applique pieces. Just give you a quick look there. And and your dressed and plate wedges and that. So it would be handy to grab some uh, template plastic so you can cut those out of template plastic. And for the applique ones, I will probably be using the Polyfuse product, which is a um, one-sided fusible and it's it dissolves in water. So when you wash your um, quilt at the end, it, it will all wash out and there'll just be some soft fibres in there. So that'll be handy for the applique ones because I think in the instructions they're all uh, needle turned. But you can do the raw edge if you prefer. In that case you would use some Vliza Flicks. 
Uh, so if you're going to do a uh, raw edge, sorry, turned edge applique, you'll need some Roxanne's glue basted. And it will be handy to have a sew line glue stick. And for all your marking out and drawing your half square triangle lines on the backs of your half square triangles, I would you be using my sew line trio pen, which has um, three different leads in it. So it has the lead, the pink one, which is not coming through at the moment, and a white. So you just load them up with the three different coloured leads and um, makes it quite easy to change to whichever colour you want, uh, depending on what works on the back of the fabric, whether it's a lead or a white or a pink. And then for um, cutting out the applique shapes, I tend to use a smaller pair of scissors. I've got a couple of different ones here. These are the Matilda owns, Matilda's own um, canary scissors. And these are the Fiskars um, microtip, titanium microtip micro grip. So these ones are really good. I like the way the spring action of these ones. They, um, you don't have to worry about your fingers getting numb. And these ones are quite nice too. They're very manoeuvrable. So we keep those in stock mostly, most of the time. Of course you need your rotary cutter, your mat and a nice sharp blade for cutting out. And don't forget to change your sewing machine needles quite regularly as well. Okay, I'll just flick the camera back up again and show you the first block that we've cut out. There we go. And I'll bring that up to the... See that? Take it back a little bit. That's better. So this is the first block in the book called Garden Veil, vale. and you can see I've um, fussy cut the centre. So I've used the cactus dahlia fabric. These are I fussy cut the centre out. And the um, the button mosaic and the dip dot. Um, so up the top here, you'll see how it's going to look out. I think it's going to look good, and it's a good start. So the other one, so what where there's more than one block of everything, um, I think I'll probably make one in a in a darker selection and the other one in a brighter, lighter selection. So I've got some lighter fabrics in there as well, just to have a little bit of contrast and um, where possible make some, add some black and white in there. So I think that's gonna look really good. As far as uh, when we'll pop in, it'll be, it's hard to say what day is the best day to do it. Uh, so if you've got any suggestions about the best day to, um, to watch the videos but as I said you'll be able to watch them anytime anyway and um, for those that are not on Facebook I will also be putting it on our website on our show me how page and um, you can always keep up to date with the newsletter so in the newsletter I'll put where we're, where we're at as well hi Evelyn I need to talk to you, Evelyn, about um, the things that we've got sitting here waiting for you. That's all right. We can talk about that tomorrow. So, as a reminder, this is our book that we're going to be working on. And I love the way that there's colour photos in there. So that can give you uh, some assistance in your colour selection as well, which is really good. And... There are 108 blocks, so we'll try and do one a day, maybe. We'll make it the 100 day, like a 100 day project. So we'll try and do one a day. If not, I'll, um, on Monday, I'll let you know what, what I'm working on for the week. And uh, then we can check in again on the following Monday, maybe. Maybe Mondays will be the day that we check in and uh, or maybe it could be a Friday so you've got something to do on the weekend for those that working girls that uh, want to be sewing on the weekend and we'll 
we'll see how we go. If you've got any other um, tips and suggestions of colours that you've already chosen, pop them into the group. So if you're not already in the group, make sure you join the Facebook group. So you can get to that by looking at the, at the top of the fa our Facebook page. There's a little groups tab. So if you click on that, it'll list all the groups in there. You'll find it in there. It's called the Boho Heart. So along with Angela. So I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody else is doing as well next week. And uh, so I'll probably pop in again on Friday and share with you which blocks I've done already for the week. And then we'll maybe touch base again on the Monday. So happy sewing, everyone. And uh, so I've come popped in today just to make sure that if you haven't got any fabric or your books, I can get it in the post for you this week. And so you'll have it ready to start next Monday. But if you've already got your book and you've started planning, that's fantastic. Uh, what I've done is I'm going to create a spreadsheet and list all the fabrics that I'm using. Um, so if you see anything, just give me a ring or send me a text or a message and I can tell you what fabrics they are and which bundle they come out of or um, if they're just a standalone fabric as well. As I said, happy sewing. We will see you again soon. Bye-bye.